Okay, welcome everyone to another episode of OXA Connects. OXA Connects is funded by the Oklahoma Department of Human Services Oklahoma Successful Adulthood Program uh, and is our opportunity to connect uh, youth workers, foster parents, young adults in, in and from foster care, as well as several others with uh, resource providers, thought leaders, and other special guests who um, have something to say or uh, things to share and that would support young people in foster care successfully aging to aging out of care and into transition to adulthood. Uh, so um, on this episode of Oaks of Connects, we have Jared William here. Hi, Jared, how are you doing? Doing good, thank you for having me. Jared and I will be discussing uh, the, the benefits of career technical school and, and how uh, young people fresh out of high school or anybody really who's looking for um, an opportunity to get a, a highly in-demand job or, or to improve their skills uh, can take a look at career technical school as a very legitimate option. Uh, so we'll discuss some of the benefits of career tech, um, how it's changing the face of education and employment for, for young people and, uh, and young adults alike, uh, as well as some of the uh, things that we can do uh, to hear right here in Oklahoma to help young people in foster care get connected with career technical schools and help them explore that as a, as a valid option and a valid pathway towards employment. Uh, so um, uh, a little bit about my guest and then we will um, we'll just start things off. So Jared Williams is the Senior Director of the Oklahoma Employment and Training Alliance. Uh, the Oklahoma Employment and Training Alliance um, helps Oklahomans and Central Oklahoma achieve sustainable employment. So they do all kinds of stuff that Jared will tell us about in just a minute. Um, uh, in addition to that, Jared has been teaching employment skills to thousands of young people over the course of his career uh, and has presented over a dozen conferences. Um, Jared specializes in employment skills such as resumes, portfolios, self-branding, gamification, uh, and there's so many more I, I I can't list them all. And Jared is well known for his engaging presentations that utilize modern technology and games while maintaining sincere human interaction. When it comes to employment, remember you went to Jared. Hey, Jared, how are you doing? Doing good, doing good. Thank you for having me here today, James. Great, great. Uh, and we are so glad to have you. So thanks for agreeing to be on this and, and talking to us. Um, so just a little bit of background information then I'll, and then I'm, I'll turn kind of the mic over to you. So uh, career tech education um, is kind of generally known as uh, education that's designed to provide some sort of kind of technical skill uh, or vocational skill required to complete the task of a particular and specific job is kind of the definition I have for it. Um, and in the 1970s, the US began to send many manufacturing jobs overseas in favor of supporting and promoting white collar jobs. But since then, many people have been looking at career technical education as something for students who can't handle the rigors of academics, which we will kind of um, unpack that uh, and kind of talk about that in just a minute. Uh, but more recently, in the late in the late 2000s, that tide has begun changing and, and the conversation about career technical uh, education is, um, I think, being driven a lot by the job market itself and about employers stating we actually need folks who are trained and ready to work. Uh, and, and especially during COVID-19, we've learned that many of those ready to work jobs are essential to the way uh, we live and, and, and uh, survive here in the United States of America. Uh, so some examples might include plumbing, electricians, medical health professionals, uh, uh, truck drivers, just to name a few of these types of jobs that uh, do not require college degrees, but do require some very specific technical uh, or, vac or vocational skills. Um, I was looking, Jared, at um, Oklahoma Works, and I was looking at kind of the kind of top jobs or critical jobs for the state of Oklahoma in the coming years. And what I noticed was that more than half of them are these types of kind of uh, vocational jobs, right? Truck worker, machinist, welder, um, maintenance workers, uh, various types of technicians, right? At least half of the jobs that are kind of um, up and coming in Oklahoma, meaning they're in high demand, they pay really well, all um, actually require um, these types of special technical skills um, education. So tell us a little bit about um, 
career tech education and, and how it might differ from traditional college education? Okay, so career and technical education um, is all about actually providing a skill set that can be used uh, in the job market. One of the major things that separates career tech from a college is the fact that career tech programs are created, monitored, and updated by, by employers in that industry. So it's standard practice typically to for twice a year, sometimes just once a year, depending on where the program's at, uh, for employers in that industry to come review all of the curriculum for a program, uh, review it, what, mach what machinery or uh, equipment that program is using and make suggestions of how that curriculum needs to be updated of, uh, oh, hey, we don't use uh, that uh, equipment anymore. You need to get this equipment. Uh, we don't teach, uh, we don't, uh, this information that you're teaching is no longer relevant. You need to be t focusing on this. That way it's constantly staying updated um, in order to uh, better suit the current job market and the current industry. 97% of career tech students within a year of graduating have either continued on to college to further their education or gotten a job in the industry that they went to school for. And that's, so two things I heard that just kind of really, I think, stick out to me. One is this whole kind of constant feedback loop between, between the education center and, and the actual employers themselves to kind of customize things in a way it's like, we want, and I've been using this word ready for work, right? We want folks to walk out of this place ready to take on these jobs. And then the other thing that really stuck out to me is this um, very quick recruitment of folks who graduate from career tech, um, which, you know, is not always the case sometimes for getting bachelor's degrees, right? In fact, there's lots of memes about getting that degree in English or that degree in anthropology. And, and while your head's very full of a lot of uh, liberal arts education, you're, you're slinging coffee at Starbucks sometimes uh, yeah. while you're waiting one, for that job to come around. One thing that I always tell my students is that I went and I got my bachelor's degree in political science, which yes. qualified me perfectly to move back in with my parents after I graduate. Uh, <laughs> right. The uh, whole idea yeah. of the career tech system is the exact opposite. You, sure. If you go to school to learn something, then that should make it where you're able to then provide for yourself, uh, if not entirely, mostly afterwards. Yeah, and, and and not to not to dog liberal arts education because I I also have uh, my bachelor's degrees in anthropology as a matter of fact, and um, it it has a lot of value. But something I heard you say is a lot of young people, it's nice to get these skills, have a well paying job, and then continue your um, academic endeavors uh, right after that. Right, and that's one of the myths uh, that uh, go around with career tech is that your options are college or career tech or nothing, yeah. uh, which nothing is the worst of all options, but <laughs> college or career tech. And that's not the case whatsoever. Actually, uh, at least at Moore Norman, which is where I'm from, uh, approximately 50% of those that graduate from Moore Norman go on to college. And so the reason why they come to Moore Norman is either to go into a program that then goes into college. For instance, we have a huge pre-engineering program that goes and makes you where you're one step ahead of all the other college students going into engineering. You've already started to learn those skills and those basics and the math associated with it and everything else. Uh, or our biotechnology uh, program, uh, biomedical science, sorry, recently got a name change, uh, program <laughs> that directly is designed as a funnel system into college to prepare you for that kind of career uh, ultimately. But then also those that come to career tech just simply so that they have a skill that can never be taken away from them that they can always use to either pay, pay for themselves while they're in college or worst case scenario as a fallback career plan if it, what they go to college for doesn't work out. So I, um, one of the major reasons why you and I know each other, James, is because I'm a foster parent. I've fostered yes. and adopted two teenagers and both of them I had go to career tech, even though they both were determined to go to college, which is fine. Uh, both of them I had to go to career tech first, so that way they would have something else 
to work on. So one went to auto service and learn how to be a mechanic. Um, that way, if he works as an auto mechanic while he's in college, fantastic. If he doesn't, then he at least always knows how to fix his car if it breaks down. Yes. Or at least knows all the right terminology so he doesn't get screwed over whenever his car does break down and he takes it to his shop. Uh, the other one learned welding and now uh, went to college for a little bit before dropping out and now is in the Navy um, as a CB, and he does that. That's since he already has that skill set, he utilizes that uh, to That's make great. even more money and move it up ahead of his colleagues in the Navy. That's awesome. Well, um, so you mentioned kind of one big misconception about career tech, which is this idea that, uh, and I even feel like I remember um, when I was in high school having someone tell me that there's two options and and it made it seem like those pathways don't ever meet again right like you can go this way and get into college or you can go this way and get into technical school and and probably some of the decisions i made were based on that information right well i i'm pretty sure i want to go to college so i'll just i'll go this way what might be some other stigmas uh, or misconceptions about career tech school that that you would like to kind of clear up for folks well uh you kind of touched on a little bit one of the things that Whenever I was in high school, I knew that you could go to career tech and go to cosmetology school. And <laughs> that was pretty much it. That's the only thing that I knew. Yes, That's cosmetology and truck to. driving, I think were yep. the two things I knew about. <laughs> uh, in reality, there are a ton of programs. First of all, you can go to career tech while you're in high school, which is amazing. Uh, you can spend your junior and senior year in high school spending half of your day at your high school and the other half of the day at career tech in one of these programs. But the second of all is that there are a ton of different programs. More Norman Technology Center by itself has 39, I believe now, uh, programs, full long-term programs that they do, you know, and they have a large variety. I was in theater in high school. If someone had told me that there was a digital and cinema uh, technology program where I can go learn how to be a filmmaker, then I would have absolutely jumped on it, but I didn't know it existed. There is a computer programming uh, program. There's a cyber defense program, because if you go to a college to go and learn it, computer sciences, that's okay, but it's technology is changing too quickly uh, right. for, for what you started learning by the time you start a program, if it just, just got completely remade and is all up to date, by the time you graduate four years later, most of that knowledge is outdated and already. So going into, a, going, in, going into a technology program at a career tech where it's constantly being updated by employers as you're there, and it's a one to two year program, depending on whether or not you attend full-time versus part-time, it's a lot more relevant current information. But Technology aside, there's also, of course, the welding, the truck driving, the construction, the things that we're used to, as well as the nursing, the medical assisting, the dental assisting, yes. the veterinary assistant, all of those kinds of things as well. Yeah, the way I like to think of it is it's it's like think about what interests you in terms of a career and, and career tech kind of offers a very direct path you know, to, to that career. Um, and um, you be and I was surprised as I was looking at some of the career tech schools here in Oklahoma, and I was kind of browsing through some of the offerings. I was surprised to see the variety of things. Like I think I saw things like how to build prosthetic legs as a mm -hmm. as a career choice that uh, one school offers, um, a clock making one, a jewelry making one. Um, uh, anyways, there was just so many that stuck out to me. It's like, huh, I had no idea that there was a program for that. And, yeah. you know, and like you said, minimum, uh, you know, one to two years. What, what, what is the average time it takes to kind of get trained in, in a typical trade? So if you're in high school, uh, then that means that you are coming part time, half a day. And so normally for most programs, it will be two years, your junior and senior year. Uh, if you're out of high school and therefore you can come the entire day, then it's normally one year. Uh, but that being said, that's all of our long-term programs, which, as you said, there's a wide variety. There are 29 technology center uh, districts in Oklahoma, 
with 59 campuses amongst those 29 districts. Every single one of them offer different programs. <laughs> um, but that being said, uh, I partially lost my train of thought. <laughs> <clears throat> you can go and get to, through most of those programs in one year if you attend full-time or two years if you attend part-time, but that's also just our long-term programs. There's also short-term programs. So for instance, like uh, EMS, being a paramedic, that's a short-term program that only takes a few months to get through. Um, some uh, basic peace officer, learning how to be going through your CLEAP certification to become a police officer or a high, high level security officer or whatever career aspirations you have, that's a short-term program. There are uh, just going and learning Photoshop, that way you can go be a person that does Photoshop, just learning film editing, you know, yeah. any of those little individual bits you can do in much, much shorter time periods, just depending on what you want to do. Yeah, uh, you know, what What I think is really exciting is, is like you said, you can, you can go to paramedic training and um, it doesn't mean that you necessarily wouldn't continue in your career if it interests you to move on into nursing or even into medical school down the road. But it almost just kind of gives you a pipeline into the industry, uh, which, you know, do you feel like that helps or, or hinders someone to kind of already kind of be in the industry uh, versus working towards and like, let's say you want to become a doctor someday. Does it help you or do you think it harms you to kind of already kind of be dialed into the industry, either as a medical assistant or a paramedic versus just kind of focusing on your academics? Uh, depends on how you define a uh, help or harm. Uh, it might harm you in the fact that it might make it where you decide not to do that career path. Uh, <laughs> right. But to me, that's very helpful. Uh, I mean, the vast majority of people, we've known this for a very long time. The vast majority of people in college change their major at least once while they're in college. I was yeah. one of those people. I was a theater major and then went to political science because I guess I decided there's sure. too many job prospects in theater. <laughs> Who knows? So uh, many. <laughs> so, but most people change their majors. We don't, it's impossible at a young age to know 100% what kind of job you want to do. And for the record, whatever career you did do decide, chances are you're not going to do it your entire life. It's chances are that job will either disappear or be completely changed and no longer look anywhere near like it did whenever you first started. Because right. I mean, some of the most popular jobs nowadays did not exist whenever you and I were younger, James. That's true. That's YouTube very true. wasn't around nonetheless a <laughs> career as a YouTuber. Uh, exactly. And that's a pretty dang lucrative career. I mean, if you get 100,000 subscribers, you can, you know, make up to $1,000 a week just, just on YouTube or even $1,000 a day. Sorry, I had that number wrong, <laughs> <laughs> which is fantastic. <laughs> but yes, so you'll probably be changing careers at some point in time. So going to a career tech system where it's low time commitment and low cost to test out the field that you want to be in or get the experience in that field to help bolster up what you're doing later. I had one student a couple years ago that, uh, I won't name the employer just in case, just in case there's some <laughs> confidentiality concern, but an employer hey, came, uh, attended our job fair that we had and was specifically starting to work on this interesting project where they wanted someone with experts with, uh, with expertise or experience using Raspberry Pis, which if you don't know with Raspberry Pi, they are these little basic computers that you can program any program to do pretty much anything. Okay. And we happened to have a student that went to, that did a Raspberry Pi uh, project for a competition that you went to that year and be like one state in that competition. <laughs> and so this company went and offered him the job at 17 years old, offered him $35,000 to come work on this Raspberry Pi project for them. Uh, <laughs> and he ultimately turned it down because he wanted to, he didn't want to go to college part-time. He wanted to focus just on going to college in computer science, uh, which absolutely killed me. Because as I explained to him, like, dude, if you want 
if you want to go into computer science, this is where you're going to learn it. Whatever you're going to learn in college is not going to match what you're learning on the job, working for this company at the helping them start a new project from the ground up. This is going to be, this will launch your entire career potentially. And, but he just really, really wanted to go to college first and not work, uh, which is, which is fine. It's his own choice, but those, those are the benefits. Those are the good choices that you get to make whenever you go to career tech is the fact that you are already marketable. Exactly. One of the questions we often get at OXA is whether or not someone should or should not go with a private school versus a public school. Uh, so uh, and, and I won't name any specific industries, but a lot of young people contact us asking for support financially uh, for a variety of schools and find um, that there's there's some big cost differences between public and private schools. Um, there's some belief that maybe the public school isn't offering as high quality of an education uh, sometimes, or um, that what the private school is offering is unique to that private school and not available. There's not a public option available. What, to help a young person or a foster parent who's trying to help a young person navigate some of these decisions about whether I go with public or private. Um, first, what's the difference between the two and, and kind of what are the pros and cons of each? Okay. Well, first of all, I'm assuming you're talking about public and private specifically in kind of the career tech vocational sector. Yes. Uh, yes. As exactly. opposed to public and private universities, which is an entirely Correct. separate topic. Exactly. <laughs> Well, whenever it comes to uh, public versus private uh, in Oklahoma, when it comes to the career tech and vocational sector is, first of all, it's very easy to recognize which is public and which is private. If it says technology center, it is public. <laughs> if okay. it does not, it is private. Uh, <laughs> that's a very easy way to distinguish between the two. <clears throat> Uh, but all of the technology centers in Oklahoma, you're going to find that they are exceptionally cheaper. Um, and there's a few different reasons for that. But first, let me go over a little bit of what that pay structure looks like. Hey, if you're in high school, there is no cost to attending whatsoever uh, in a career tech program. It is completely covered. And, and that yes. means it's covered by the state of Oklahoma, similar to... Um, 12th grade and younger, right? So similar yep. to secondary and elementary. That's great. Yep. And depending on what uh, technology center you're at, they may cover beyond that. So for instance, at more Norman Technology Center, where I came from, if you are 21 or under, it's covered. Or I should specify, there's no tuition. There's still like a $250 resource fee and if you need any tools or anything, you might have to buy that. But sure. that's it. Uh, and even if you're over 21, you'd still pay full tuition. You're still going to pay less than two grand. And you might even still qualify for financial aid to, to cover that. So <laughs> there's going to be almost no cost concern whatsoever uh, with, a, with a technology center. And the reason why is because private companies, the, the money that they get uh, is from tuition, from people attending. That's how they get all of their money. Hmm. Technology centers, how technology centers were set up in the state, which is probably one of the best decisions that were, was made in Oklahoma. It's not a ton of great decisions made in Oklahoma, but this was probably one of the best ones, uh, which is that all the technology centers actually get the majority of their funding from property taxes. So wow. your local school that you went through, your K-12 school, got almost all their funding from the state and only got property taxes to, for, to help with like building maintenance and building new buildings. Well, the technology centers get almost all of their funding from the property taxes. They get not very much from the state. Depending on the technology center, it, it could be anywhere from 40% to just 5% of their budget comes from the state. The rest of it is from those local property taxes, which is very stable funding uh, and therefore makes it where a lot can be accomplished consistently. Yes, as long as people own homes yep. in the community, they're funding tech centers. Basically, right? Just to sum Exactly. That yep. Okay. Awesome. And that's not even including, of course, there's 
most, like I said, employers come in and reevaluate programs to, you know, help them update their curriculum and it, give them equipment suggestions. A lot of those employers then go and also donate to those programs. Uh, the auto service at Moore Norman Technology Center, they have like 30-ish cars uh, for you to work on as you're learning the skills and everything. All of them were donated from dealerships in the region. And they weren't used cars donated. They were all brand new cars donated to the program from dealerships. Wow. Wow. So um, so is there ever a time? So it sounds to me like, um, at least if you live here in Oklahoma, the, the, the options for public um, technical centers is, is really a strong argument for. But is there ever a time when let's say someone wants to go to a one of these private ones, um, what might you ask them to think about before they uh, commit? So if you're going to go to a private one, um, first, I there's only a couple of reasons that I can imagine you doing so. So let me just make sure that you have all these reasons checkmarked. <laughs> the reasons to go to a private one versus a public one is if either, there is not a public one offering the specific program that you want in a reasonable driving distance from you. Okay. That's a, that's a fair enough reason. If you really want to do welding, and I can't imagine a place in Oklahoma that doesn't have a welding school, but we'll just pretend that there isn't one in Enid, that the closest one is Edmond, which is a really far commute, uh, then, then yeah, okay, you might go to the private one. Hmm. Uh, or hmm, the other reason would be just if you really, really, really want to learn that skill and the local technology center uh, near you is just always completely full without any seats available and you just, you've been waiting for like two years to try to get in and just still can't get in, then you might, might go option. to a private one. Okay, excellent. Well, um, let's change gears just a little bit. Um, I wanted to to think about now from the point of view of a caregiver. And so some folks in our audience, they're foster parents, they are youth care workers, meaning they work in congregate care settings uh, like shelters or group homes, uh, or they may be therapists and other types of uh, outreach, uh, youth care professionals or caseworkers. Um, what's kind of things that um, they should, what's some ways that they can support helping a young person explore some of these employment pathways or some of these options for career tech education? Well, the best thing that you can do is find out where your, what your local technology center is, uh, which to do that, it's very simple. Just go to okcareertech.org. That is the state's website for it. And on it, there's a tab for technology centers. I'll bring up all the technology centers based off geographic region figure out which one's yours, and then you can click to go to that one's personal website. Uh, once you have that information, then you can either on their website, go and check out what all programs that they have, or almost certainly now granted because of COVID, there might be a little bit of iffiness on this, but you'll probably be able to go and schedule a tour if you want to, to go tour. You know, I typically don't go with just one unless you're unless say your kid uh, is just very hard, heartfelt towards a specific thing, typically try to schedule like, okay, what's, what's three to five that they might be interested in and go okay. and schedule for you to just go, go tour and learn about those programs. Okay. Uh, you can so find you a can... lot of that information online, but really walking into the classroom and seeing the stuff that you get to yeah. work with is way more impactful. Yeah. And sounds like you can set it up similar to a college tour. You you take tours of the tech center and learn about the various programs and and opportunities at that at that particular tech center. Yep. Yeah. Um, anything else that uh, that you might recommend for 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 young people? Like you mentioned that for your own two young people, you just kind of said, "I think you should learn a skill or a trade in addition to your other academic goals." Um, any other recommendations that you might have for fellow foster parents who who are working with young teenagers uh, as they start to think about kind of their their future and their kind of maintaining gainful employment? Well, rather you're in the foster care system um, or a foster parent or working with it or have a foster kid, let's be honest about the statistics. Statistically, 
kid that was in the foster care system uh, at the time that they turn 18, that a kid that ages out of the foster care system is statistically very likely to either be homeless or incarcerated. That is, is, is a very strong possibility for their future. So, uh, or if you're a foster kid, that's a very strong possibility for your future. The career tech system is very good at helping overcome that because you get to, again, for free to, for almost nothing to nothing, get to go learn a skill that is marketable so that way you can support yourself so you don't become homeless. And hopefully, therefore, also don't need to do anything illegal to get money uh, and so you hopefully don't become incarcerated. <clears throat> but then on top of that, once you're in a career tech system, <clears throat> once you're in one program, you can typically switch to another program pretty easily if you change your mind, if you get you know a month in and realize, ooh, I actually really don't like this. <laughs> then normally you can switch to a different program uh, without much issue. But being at career tech, there's also plenty of wraparound services, just like a lot of colleges are starting to have as well. You know, normally if uh, you're at a career tech, there's tutors uh, on staff that might be able to come help tutor you if you're starting to do bad in some of your high school classes. Um, there is the entire financial aid department that will go and help uh, you <clears throat> with getting, obtaining financial aid to help pay for things either at the school or outside of the school. <clears throat> a most of the technology centers have foundations that will give scholarships to students that are in need. Uh, wants to either either just help pay for their you know tools that they need for class and resources that they need or if they're facing a really hard time you know help help stop them from getting evicted to where they have to drop out of the program uh, whatever the case may be there's a lot of those wraparound services uh, inside most technology centers to help help make sure that you become successful because the last thing that me or James or anyone uh, hopefully <laughs> hopefully anyone, uh, once is for you to end up homeless or incarcerated. Uh, and this is just one, one thing that you can do that will drastically change that equation for you. Awesome. So, um, so just to summarize things for people, career tech is a very viable option here, in, especially in the state of Oklahoma, because there's a lot of funding uh, and uh, by the state to kind of support career tech. And this is because um, Oklahoma has identified several kind of jobs that are very necessary for our state that happen to require career tech skills and that that need to kind of fill that skills gap um, is, is really high. And so there's a lot of energy right now into supporting that from energy from employers, energy from state folks, uh, as well as from a lot of other folks to kind of make sure that we have young professionals in Oklahoma that meet, have the skills needed to do the jobs that are available here in the state. Um, so just to switch some gears a little bit again, so one of the things that comes up a lot uh, while I have your ear with young people that call us uh, is, um, so let's say I, I, I know what the good paying jobs are, I'm in the process of um, pursuing them. You have a background not in, in addition to kind of career tech, but also this background in preparing people for those next steps, preparing resumes, preparing portfolios, being thoughtful about um, what you're putting on your own personal social media, right? Uh, when when you're getting ready to hire a job, do you have any other do you have any other tips for young people in terms of either uh, landing that good paying job or keeping that good paying job? Yes. Uh, so uh, that's going to be hard to narrow down to a. I don't think that we have three <laughs> more hours tips. for yes. me to be here. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of different aspects to that. Uh, First of all, one thing that I always try to remind everyone is that employment, at least how I think of it, how I see it, is employment is a game. It is a game that you play with employers where you have to play well enough for them to decide that they want you to be on their team. Uh, you have to play the game with them. And that means that you do have to follow their rules uh, if you're going to get on their team. So that means... On the application, doing what it says on the application. As for a resume, you need to have a resume and ideally a really good one that also agrees with what you put on the application. Don't put conflicting information. Uh, and that also covers social media because employers are going to look at your social media 100%. There is no question 
Maybe if it is a small mom and pop store that is owned and operated by people 60 plus years old, they might not look at your social media, but every other circumstance, they're going to look at your social media. So make sure that that is sending the same message that your resume and application is, which is that you're going to be a great value to their team. Hmm. Uh, on top of that, find, find help from an employment specialist. There's several of us around there. There's almost certainly going to be one or more at the technology center that you're attending. You can also go to other places like Goodwill has plenty of uh, people that will help you out with employment. You can find employment specialists at a lot of different places. Let go to one, let them help you put together a resume, or if you really wanna make their life and your life easier, make a rough draft of a resume. It can look really bad, but make a rough draft of a resume and give it to them to make it beautiful and they will. That's awesome. So, so um, what I'm hearing you say is most jobs, even, even jobs we've always traditionally considered as blue collar or essential do require resumes. They do take, they do a kind of diligent search through your social media and other things to kind of make sure they're choosing the right fit for their company. Oh, yes. Yes. Occasionally you can like maybe find a construction site. That's not, uh, that's not asking for resumes, but yeah. even in those cases, they still look at you online. Sure. Sure. Uh, and the other big kind of hot tip I heard you kind of point out that I wanted to kind of just make sure people heard was like when you're filling out applications and, and other things, you know, it's representative of you. So spell things correctly, use good penmanship, put accurate, correct information, especially how to contact you, right? So <laughs> put an email on there that you use and that you'll respond to quickly, et cetera. Yep. It, which I get it. I mean, I, for the record, I have worked for 25 different companies uh, and I've, I've applied for at least 500 jobs in my life, if not wow. in the thousand jo jobs area. So I understand it is tedious uh, and maddening filling out applications. But in this day and age where computers get to the screen out your applications before they ever get to a person, it is 100% about quality. Take the time to make sure that you're doing everything correctly and putting yourself in the best light doesn't matter if it takes you three days to fill out one application. If that ends up being a good quality application, you're almost certainly going to get an interview. Just wow. doing something really fast in 20 minutes that you barely put any effort into may make it where you get to knock out 40 applications that week, but you're not going to get any interviews. you got to focus on quality. Focus on quality. You heard it here. Uh, all right. Um, well, you are the, you are the director uh, uh, at um, OKETA, uh, would you like to take some time to tell folks a little bit about uh, your program and kind of what you offer for folks who are in your kind of the communities that you serve? Yeah, so uh, Oklahoma's Employment and Training Alliance, or OKETA, or OKETA, uh, depending <laughs> on how much effort you want to put into it, uh, is designed to help it remove barriers to employment for Oklahomans across the state. Uh, for all the people that face those barriers, whether it be someone that's just as involved, someone that has disabilities, someone that comes from generational poverty, um, someone with a high ACEs score, which is most of the people probably watching this, um, eh, it, it, we are designed to go and try to remove those barriers to employment. Uh, and the way that we do this is actually by not ourselves helping people with employment, but by helping out those organizations. So my goal, my job is to help make it where Goodwill can be more accessible to those, everyone that needs employment help. My job is to make it where the Homeless Alliance is more accessible to everyone that needs housing. Uh, it's to design it to make it where I can help build those connections to where Goodwill and the Homeless Alliance can work together where, and it trade back and forth of Goodwill coming into Homeless Alliance to teach employment skills or Homeless Alliance coming over to Goodwill to help out with people with housing. It's to help make it where it's a much more seamless network so that everyone can get the services that they need. Uh, that way you're not out floundering around on your own, uh, trying to figure out uh, how to not be hungry, how to not be homeless, how to not be unemployed. Uh, 
It makes it where if you've touched base with one organization in the state, you should begin help from all of the organizations in the state. That sounds great. And so if folks wanted to learn more about uh, this program or want to reach out in any way, how, how do they do that? OKETA.org. Uh, Easy enough. Which, yep, which that website will undoubtedly go through a lot of updating uh, next month or so uh, as, as I build it out some more. But that's, that's where you can find the gist. All right, awesome. Well, uh, any final thoughts, Jared, for, for folks out there um, who are considering career tech uh, as, a, as an option for them and their kind of employment goals? Uh, yeah, the best thing that you should consider is just why not? If it's not going to cost you anything uh, and you're pretty much guaranteed a job after you leave, you don't get a job immediately after you leave. It's almost certainly because you weren't that interested. If you're interested, you're going to get a job. Uh, <clears throat> or if you don't want a job and you want to go to college, it's still going to help you out with that. So yeah, yeah. why not? Why not just go ahead, hop, find your local way of career tech and check out their programs. It's yeah. going to take five least, minutes of your out. time and possibly change your life. Yeah, and I will add, as I was doing my own investigation before this interview, it, it looks like the average pay for many of these jobs is between twenty and twenty-five dollars an hour. Would you Would you agree with that? Yep, uh, yeah, that's, that's that's really great. one of the requirements. It was a requirement for it to be at least fifteen dollars an hour uh, for any program to exist. If there's a program that we're starting to saturate the market and there's too many people, and so therefore wages drop, then that program goes away. Interesting. <laughs> But if there's a niche that isn't being filled, something that pays a whole lot that we don't have enough workers for and has high start rates, then a program gets created. Uh, so yeah, it's you have to nowadays, it has to be a program where the average starting wage a year after graduating is at least $20 an hour uh, then in order for it to be a viable program. That's great. All right. Well, Jared, thank you so much for offering your time and your talent and your energy to to kind of share what you know uh, to the folks um, that are involved in the OXA program. We really appreciate you being here uh, and spending the time with us. Um, we uh, will be back with a whole host of guests coming up uh, in, over the next month. So make sure that you follow us on Facebook and check our events frequently to kind of see who's coming up over the next year uh, that we'll be interviewing. Uh, Jared, thank you so much for uh, taking the time and uh, we will um, see everyone later. Yeah, thank you for having me. Have a good day.